Hello everybody. In our last couple of episodes, we've focused on professional artists who in part made a living by painting portraits from photographs. Today, we're instead going to look at an amateur artist who's represented in the museum's collection by watercolours of Otago landscapes. His name was John Crawford. And his story begins here in Glasgow. He was born here and became a corn factor, a grain merchant here. In 1846, he married Margaret Helen Craig and began raising a family here. Then 28 years later, John, Margaret and some of their children, Joanna, who was 22, David, 18, Archibald, 17, Jesse, 16 and William, 11, boarded the city of Tanjore at Greenock and sailed off to begin a new life on the other side of the world. They arrived in Dunedin in May 1874. This view of Palmerston in 1878 is the earliest of John Crawford's works that we have in Toitu's collection. On Boxing Day 1878, John and Margaret's eldest daughter Joanna Cleland Crawford married Henry Stuart McColl, who was the schoolmaster here at the South Otago settlement of Wangaloa. In February 1881, John made five paintings of the tiny settlement, which joined together to form a panorama that is over 1,200 millimetres wide. This view of a farmhouse near Saddle Hill, dated March 1881, and perhaps painted by Crawford on his way home from Wangaloa, is thought to be the home of his son-in-law's father, Duncan McColl. The Crawfords, meanwhile, had settled in William Street, just below the town belt in the neighbourhood of Upper High Street. One of the biggest happenings in their neighbourhood when the Crawfords lived there was the introduction of the Roslyn cable car up Rattray Street in 1881, and the Mornington cable car up High Street in 1883. Several of Crawford's works show the Mornington cable cars. This one shows an uphill car appearing over the rise near the intersection of High and Maitland Streets, and a downhill car heading towards the William Street intersection, with Anderson's Bakery on the corner. It's dated June 1884. And this is another version of the 1884 view, reproduced four years later in November 1888. It has a handwritten inscription on the back that reads, High Street Dunedin, near Alva Street, as at June 1884, in grateful remembrance of much courtesy and attention shown to self and daughter while sailing with Captain Nordstrom in the Grafton, Shipping reports in a local newspaper confirm that Mr Crawford had indeed sailed with Captain Nordstrom in the Grafton on a voyage from Westport to Port Chalmers in October 1888. Here's another of his views of the High Street cable car line, uphill this time, from the Maitland Street intersection, dated 11 February 1885. And here it is again, on the 20th of March 1889 from across the road, looking towards the house of merchant James Hazlitt on the corner of Maitland and High Streets. This one, also dated 1889, captures the view from the top of Glen Park Avenue, where an extension of the Mornington cable car system to Mary Hill had opened in 1885. Here we have the steep track between the end of Clark Street and Canongate up what was known as Breakneck Hill. Perhaps it would have been more correct to call it Breakleg Hill, because in January 1873, a year or so before the Crawfords arrived, Edward Hunt fell over a bank here and injured his leg. He was carried down to a hotel and a doctor was sent for. The appropriately named Dr Sawley declared it was just a sprain and that Hunt would be back on his feet in a week. When that proved not to be the case, he took Sawley to court, seeking a hundred pounds in damages. In the end, the magistrate decided that a fair and competent degree of skill had not been displayed by Dr. Sawley, 
and Hunt was awarded the £100 he sought. This view is dated June 1884 and shows R.K. Murray and Sons' newish confectionery works in the shadow at the foot of the hill. The factory was built in 1881. In 1883, Crawford appears to have been back in East Otago, capturing two views of the old flour mill at Palmerston. The first flour mill on the Shag River at Palmerston was built in the 1860s by the Runciman family. However, in 1868, the mill was hit by a disastrous flood. Mr and Mrs Runciman, their three children, two men and a maid, spent the night perched on the water wheel of the mill after the house, mill and stables were all swept away. The group was rescued the following morning thanks to the heroic efforts of William Gray, who swam through the floodwaters with a rope attached to a makeshift boat. Runciman then sold to William Alfred Young, who built a new four-storey mill here. Young would become the first mayor of Palmerston in 1872. He was also a nurseryman, and kept hatching ponds for fish here. He sold the mill in 1879, so he no longer owned it when Crawford painted this picture in 1883. Then in January 1885, Young's body was found face down in the Shag River. He's thought to have been working in his nursery and gone down to the river for a drink of water, suffered a seizure while doing so, and drowned. Several more of Crawford's paintings depict places in the Palmerston district in 1883. Here we have the township of McRae's flat. Here's one of its main street. And one showing the schoolhouse with its distinctive stone fence. Crawford also appears to have visited Goodwood on his 1883 foray into the Palmerston district and produced this monochrome view of a cottage there. Some of his views dated 1885 are in the vicinity of Saddle Hill again. This one of the East Tyree Church with Saddle Hill in the background is dated 2nd of January 1885. Here we have the main road at Mosgiel featuring Vanini's hotel. Swiss-born hotel keeper Damiano Vanini appears to have come to Otago in the late 1870s. In 1878, he ran Saratoga House at Blueskin. In the early 1880s, he was proprietor of the West Tyree Hotel at Outram. In about 1884, he opened the hotel in Mosgill that John Crawford captured in his 1885 work. One last work to show you, also out on the Tyree, a view of the bridge at Berwick in 1886. John was a widower by this time, his wife Margaret having passed away in 1883. In 1889, after more than 15 years living in Otago, John Crawford, the retired corn factor from Glasgow, also passed away. That's it for this episode. See you next time, and thanks for watching.